Hello and a very warm welcome to this online service from St Mary's Church Withal. I'm Manda Featherstone and I'm the Vicar of St Mary's. We are bringing to you this online service in the middle of the week and many people we know join on Wednesday at 11.30 which gives us a lovely sense of worshipping together opening God's word to hear him speak and joining our prayers together. So we're really pleased that you have joined online today. You are most welcome. We're using a form of uh, words through this service and there is a possibility of printing those off should you like to by going to our church website. But you don't need the words. Uh, everything you need will come up on the screen. And when there's words in a bold type, you are invited to join in with those. And so our opening sentence. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We now have an opening prayer with responses which acknowledges God's presence with us. And your response is, his spirit is with us. We may be online, but God is with us through his spirit and is at work in our lives and in the community. So let's pray this prayer together. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. We need not fear. His spirit is with us. We are surrounded by love. His spirit is with us. We are immersed in peace. His spirit is with us. We rejoice in hope. His spirit is with us. We travel in faith. His spirit is with us. We live in eternity. His spirit is with us. The Lord is in this place. His spirit is with us. And as the Holy Spirit moves among each of us, he assures us again of God's love, assures us that we are children of God. But also as the Holy Spirit moves, we're aware of some of those things that we don't get quite right and the poor decisions we make. But we know that because of Jesus's death, we can say sorry and know that we will be forgiven and given that fresh start. So a moment of quiet to consider what it is you want to confess to God. And so let us pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sins. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's now open God's word together and hear him speak. So here we are today um, 
in the first of our three weeks of readings from the prophets, the prophets who God had spoken through so many years ago about the coming of Jesus in the future in, uh, into our world. And there will be two more after this from other prophets. So can I ask you to take your Bibles and find um, the prophet Micah? It's fairly near the end of the Old Testament and it's a, a smallish book. Uh, so I can almost hear the pages rustling as you find where Micah is. We're going to read from chapter 5, 1 to 5. So let's pray. Our good, good Father, we love you for the gift to us of your word, through which we hear you speak to us and which speaks throughout of your love for all people and also of your plan of redemption through your son, Jesus the Christ. We love the history of your word, the poetry, the amazing insights into a little of who you are and how we are to live as we follow your Son, our Saviour, in the new life that he has given to us. So as we read today, Father, will you speak something into every heart and send us away rejoicing in our walk with him? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, have you got it? Now, in the NIV, chapter 5 is entitled, The Ruler from Bethlehem. So read it with me, and then we'll pick out varying verses and look at them in more detail. Marshal your troops, O city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. But you... Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, when I first read this, I was struck by the fluctuations in these five verses. Micah speaks of God's righteous wrath, which must inevitably result in his abandonment of his people Israel because of their sinfulness and their rejection of him. But also he speaks of God's heart of longing to show his people mercy. Then there is the promise that there will be a time in the future when God will call Israel back to him. And of course, there's the key verse for us today that speaks of the perfect ultimate ruler who will come to reign in the future. Such a sweep of emotions. And in that, I think we can feel our father's pain as he delivered this message through Micah's words. It's as though God knows what he must do, but he doesn't want to do it. If you've ever cared for children, you will know how hard it is when it's necessary to, to mete out some sort of punishment, when actually it's the last thing you want to do, but you do know that that's the only way for them to learn. So here it's as if God is saying, oh, my chosen children, my Israel, after all that I have done for you, I brought you out of slavery in Egypt into freedom. The battles I have won for you, the blessings I have lavished on you, 
And despite the continual warnings my prophets have spoken to you, you have reached the end of your road, and I have reached the end of my patience. Although it breaks my heart, I have no other choice than to abandon you to your enemies and to allow the precious holy land that I gave to you to be devastated. Now Micah the prophet is one of what we call the minor prophets. He was an ordinary man of the country who lived in the south of Judah, a contemporary of Isaiah. He was active at the time of King Zedekiah in the second half of the 8th century. His name, Micah, means, Who is like you, O God? But unlike many other prophets, Micah um, was not a priest nor a man of high standing in the community. But nevertheless, this ordinary country man was chosen by God to speak on his behalf to the continuous, continuously rebellious people of Israel. Over his career, he had rebuked them for their disobedience and idolatry. He had spoken against the false prophets among them who had led the people astray. And he had spoken against some leaders who were corrupt. And Micah wept and wailed because the people would not listen to God's words that he was speaking. They preferred to listen to the more joyful prophecies of the false prophets. And so finally here in chapter 5, he speaks of the coming, well, the imminent destruction of Israel. Look at verse 1 again. Marshal your troops, O city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. It's here. And they will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. What Micah is saying is that what was once mighty, undefeatable Israel is now so weak that it is already under siege and unable to defend itself. It's all over. Their leader, Hezekiah, is about to be conquered and humiliated by Sennacherib, king of Assyria, with a mere slap on the cheek. This is what God's people had come to because of their unfaithfulness to the God who had empowered them. It's as though Micah could hear the galloping of horses as this, the Assyrian army approached. When we come to verse 2, however, there's a change of tone. It starts with God saying, but, I love it when God says but, because it's almost always um, an introduction or is followed by a word of mercy from him. And here it comes. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Now Bethlehem was another small and insignificant place. So we have Micah, a small, insignificant countryman, and now Bethlehem. We see how God often chooses the small things, the ordinary things, through whom or through, through which he is able to display his strength and grace so that men and women cannot boast that they have achieved what God has done. He says, from you, Bethlehem, Beth <laughs> sorry, he says, from you, Bethlehem, shall come, who is he talking about here? Of course, it is Jesus, the Christ, who will be born in little Bethlehem not into a royal court with pomp and earth, earthly glory. No, the Lord of all will be born as a common infant into earthly poverty until God will lift him. He will lift him up higher than any man could be lifted. God says here that from ancient days, Jesus coming has been planned and that he will become the ultimate ruler in Israel and the ultimate ruler of the world. Therefore, 
verse 3 starts with, God says, my people, I have to give you up. From the time Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. Who does he mean here? She who is in labour. But of course, he means Mary, Jesus' mother, until she gives birth to Jesus in Bethlehem. That time of abandonment that God speaks of was to last 700 years before the between the time when the last prophet spoke and Jesus came to earth. That's some length of time. Doesn't it make you shudder to think of God abandoning you even for a moment? But, but Micah goes on to say that eventually the rest of Jesus' kindred, meaning his brothers and sisters, will return to God to be his people again. What brothers and sisters are these? They are all who will receive Jesus, believe in him and faithfully follow him. So that's us too. We too will be included and the in the restored Israel. And when that time comes, when Jesus will return to earth to take up his rule and reign, all nations will be gathered to him and he will be king forever. Verse 4 says that he will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. I was reminded here of Jesus' words about being a shepherd. We were talking about this in house um, in Green Course this week. Do you remember when he said, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, who rescues his lost sheep and carries them tenderly in his arms. That's who Jesus is and that's how he will reign. And finally, verse 5 says, and he shall be the one of peace. Here's the assurance that in the future kingdom, there will no longer be violence, nor hatred, nor disease, but only love and peace under Jesus' rule. Because when Jesus rules over nations, it will not be by brutality or force, but with love, love, love. Jesus the Christ will rule as a mighty shepherd who cares for his flock and those who he chooses to rule with him will be shepherds too. So how did God's people fall into such a sorry state? Well, it was because in their human pride, arrogance, they thought they knew better than their maker. And because the pleasures that they saw other nations around them partaking in seemed so attractive when actually they were the way to destruction. It's the same now. That is why our Father warns us against these things. Not because he's um, a spoil sport, but because he knows that if we engage in the things he mentions, that we'll be the losers. We mere mortals in our natural state are strong in pride, strong in vanity. We are still attracted to wealth and power and sensuality, but those things will always weaken us. It is only the love of God that can soften our hearts, only his power that can strengthen us in righteousness to obey him. It's only his favour that can bring us joy and contentment. When trouble comes, he will deal with it if we allow him to. When tragedy strikes, he will weep with us. He will comfort us and he will carry us through it. He promises never, never to leave our side, whatever happens. 
over and over we see in Scripture, throughout Scripture, and over and over we see in our day, that when people take their eyes off God, or Jesus, now that we know him, that is when they fail and weaken, relying again on themselves. And this is why perhaps Jesus loves the weak and the young and the humble, because they're teachable. When we know we are weak, then Jesus can strengthen us with his powerful spirit. Only in sticking close to him, to our God, can we survive. Only by following him closely and living as he teaches us can we live in freedom and joy and know for sure the certain hope of the eternal life we have through Christ, through what he did for us on the cross. Jesus lived on earth as a pattern for us to follow and he gives us the means to do that by his spirit which he left with us. All he asks is that we trust him and obey his teaching, that we adopt his humility and tenderness to ourselves and to all people, to love God first and our neighbour as ourselves, to trust him as our shepherd who will lead us, he will lead us from ahead and he holds his staff in his hand to remind us of his very few rules. So today, may we give thanks to our God of love and mercy as he reveals his plans for all of his people through his word and his prophets. Thank him that he longs for all people to come to know Jesus, his son, as their saviour. In this, each of us must play our part. And may we learn from this prophecy to put our pride aside and continue, and continue to faithfully follow Jesus our Lord, relying wholly and completely upon him. Amen. Now in our service we come to our creed, our opportunity to declare our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us now turn to the God we have declared our faith in with our prayers. We know that God is the God of love. And as a focus for our prayers, I'm going to put up this picture of a heart, that symbol we use for love. I'm going to use three sections of prayers. I will introduce each section and then leave a moment of quiet so that you can lift your prayers today to God. We will use the response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your love. We come to you now, the God of love. Let us pray for God's love to be poured out on ourselves and on others. Let us pray for those who are unwell, those awaiting surgery, those who are grieving, and those facing any challenges in relationship or the workplace or elsewhere. We pray for God's love to abound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for God's love in our Church of St Mary's. Praying for unity. Praying for deep loving relationships. Praying for our small groups and our services that we may grow as followers of Jesus. Lord God, let your love abound in our church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for God's love to be known in our communities of Withal and Hollywood or whatever community you are part of. Let us pray for the schools, for the businesses, and let us pray for our neighbours. Lord God, May your love abound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we lift all these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. As we continue in prayer, let us say the Lord's Prayer in its traditional form. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us take a moment to reflect on all we've heard in this service and all that you feel God is speaking to you now. A moment of reflection. And so a prayer as we go from this service into the rest of this day. We pray together. Help us, Lord, to live in your light, to act in your might, to think in your wisdom, to walk in your kingdom, to abide in your love your presence to prove. Amen. And let's close with the grace. And you may like to bring to mind someone else who may be joining this service or someone else you know, sharing the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen really pleased that you've been able to join this online service. Uh, we publish online services in the middle of the week on a Wednesday and on Sunday and St Mary's Church is now open for services of communion in the building at 9.30 on a Sunday morning but do contact us if you'd like to come in terms of booking a place. I'd love to hear from you if you would like to get in touch do visit our website www 
withallchurch.net. Take care, stay safe, have a blessed week.